explains. <laughs> it's funny, but I've seen it happen before, and I've been like, no, oh, yeah. no, oh. you know. So you don't you don't want to be that person. You have to you got to really open up your plan. And and a lot of times it's uncomfortable because most of us, if all we've ever done is played in church, we ideally we want to try to break out of that and try to play other stuff. But if we don't know how to, we got to take that time and we got to learn. And that's what everybody from drummers, because with drummers, it's most obvious with drummers. Like you can tell, I can tell a church drummer from a mile away. And the, and the sad part is with some, some of those, some of the drummers, the church drummers is like the, the placement is, is what makes the difference. They just chop it all over the place. You know what I'm saying? So um, the discipline part of it is a factor. It's a big factor when you're trying to play other genres of music, okay? But you can learn something from every genre of music with your classical, you know what I'm saying? Classical is going to get you right with your technique, okay? And on every instrument, whether you're playing guitar, whether you're playing drums, because if you're playing drums, it's going to teach you to use your wrist, not your whole arm. When you're, if you're playing uh, classical piano, it's going to teach you how to hold your hands properly, your wrist, all that stuff, guitar, same thing. It's going to help you with your technique. Jazz music will, will help you more so with, uh, with uh, rules. There's a lot of rules in jazz music, but then you learn the rules to be able to break them, right? Mm -hmm. So jazz is helping, it will help you with a lot of that stuff. Uh, let's see, let's see. No, giant steps, all that stuff, that, all that jazz, no pun intended. But um, jazz helps you with that to learn the rules. So when you would normally do something, uh, you could do that in jazz, you would normally do, you would do something to break the rules, jazz stuff, okay? So jazz will teach you with that. Country music might teach you how to, uh, to play stuff simp simp like simplify, because there's not a lot of stuff going on in country music. You're simply playing like some one, three. That's all you're doing. On some country songs, okay? But you can't come in there like no church guy when I'm in there shedding. Nah, it's, it's not that. <laughs> it's not what they ask you to do. Play this song, okay? And then like with an R&B song, that might teach you how to really, really discipline yourself to just play the record. You see what I'm saying? Because you got cats that want to go, and, and I, I don't know why we do that nowadays, but we want to we wanna get on the track and just like show everything that we've learned. But like, if I had a piece of sheet music in front of me, yeah, y'all have a handle in here anywhere? Is that a handle? Yeah. If if I had a, um, he's getting a handle. But I, I I was asking my students one day. I said, how many of you all have a hard time following directions? And my kids, I teach middle school band, and my kids were, you know, a lot of them raised their hand. I said, if you have a hard time following directions, you're going to have a hard time being a musician because on a piece of on a piece of sheet music. It's nothing but directions. Mm -hmm. It tells you how long to play a note, what type of note to play, how low, how high the note is, how yeah. fast it took. It's all directions. Yeah. So if you have a hard time doing that, you're going to have a hard time being a musician. I'm sorry, excuse me. All right, so make sure that, um, make sure you're definitely opening your, your horizons when it comes to uh, your, the different genres that you're, uh, you're messing with. I'm personally, I love jazz music. I'm crazy about jazz music. Gospel music nowadays, I'm, of course, you know, gospel music is, is dope, but sometimes <laughs> with the gospel music, it's, it's, it's hard to find a medium because you cut, the, you cut the song going and in the first three seconds, they done did so many chops in the intro, you're like, bruh. Like, you know, it's a lot going on. You know, so, I mean, but to each your song, all right? So, um... <laughs> Next thing, okay, let me ask this question. How many of you all in here at your church bands have uh, a full band in your church band? Okay, good, all right, define full. Uh, let's say a five piece, so you have a drummer, organ, keyboard, bass, and lead. Good, that's what I was, good, okay? Because what happens is when you have people who come from a church setting like that who are doing that on a, on a weekly basis, when they get in a band setting, they don't know how to function, okay? So say, for instance, you got like somebody who's just a, it's an organ and a drummer, he's used to doing it. And the dude on organ used to doing everything by himself. 
because he doesn't have anybody else dead. So when he gets in a band setting, he doesn't know how to fall back to let the drummer do what he needs. I mean, to let the, the bass player do what he needs to do or the guitar player or the, or the person on keys. So that's something we all also have to listen for as well when listening to music. I tell my kids, my band kids, when you listen to stuff, listen for your part and see how it fits in with everything else. You know what I'm saying? And it, it becomes difficult. Like I said, if that's what you're used to on a weekly basis, it's going to be hard to break out of that. But if we want to be those musicians who are out here um, getting these different types of gigs and all that stuff, you, you have to do that. You have to get out of your, your normal uh, way of doing stuff. Because a lot of cats are still like, well, this is how I play. All right, well, you can be playing at home. Why these other cats are out here getting these gigs? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, all right. Um, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine. I was just trying to show y'all. Oh, no. Did y'all tear this out to him? He had a picture. Come on, tell the bishop. All right, but you see right here, on this on this piece of paper, on this, this sheet music, right? You see these measures. You see the, the key signature. All of these things. Musical terminology. We're going we to get into this a little bit deeper later. But, and it's called deeper, deeper. No pun intended. But, we're going to get into this because all of these things right here, like I said, is rules. All of these are rules, man. And we got to we gotta make sure that we stick to those when we're playing. Um, next thing. Being professional as a musician. Okay? Now, we can stay here for a little bit. Um, when it comes to your playing, all right, a lot of times you can play whatever. That sounds pretty, right? But if you don't know how to be professional off of your instrument, a lot of times don't let that stuff matter, right? If you tell somebody you're going to be at a service or at a gig and the day of you're calling out, people don't respect that, right? So you have to keep your word as a musician. Your word is your bond. Even when you're out there on tour, I've talked to a lot of cats touring for a lot of different people. They say, yeah, you're on stage. What you do on stage, that's dope. But what really is going to make, make you either stay or, or leave the gig is what you're doing off stage, your professionalism, making those lobby calls, being at those rehearsals one time, all of that stuff. It's the same thing back home. If you, if you said you want to play for somebody, hold your bond. I mean, keep your word and do that. Show up to it. Now, I get it. We all make those mistakes as musicians. We want to have four gigs lined up in one day. I get it. We all done did it before. I get it. But the problem is, you can't control the starting and stopping of that stuff. But you've been giving your word to all of these people. Then, what happens is, you put cats in a bind, because now when you can't be there, they call somebody else at the last minute to try to fill it for you, and now they out there looking silly because they don't know the stuff, because, you know what I'm saying? So, that professionalism goes a long, long way, okay? And, and while we're talking about that, we are, we're here in Virginia, right? So, we have a lot of different situations with concerts and stuff, right? National artists come in. They send the music, want you to learn the music. They get here, you don't know the music. That doesn't make you look bad, that makes VA look bad. Because now when they out on tour, or they back home with another artist, like, man, I'm going to Virginia, should I bring my band, or should I, no, no, bring your band, because them dudes don't know, your, don't know the music. You got to think about that kind of stuff. Yeah. You got to think about that kind of stuff. It was um, last year, I got a phone call on a Saturday night at 11.57 p.m. to uh, play for Denise Williams. My homeboy said, what are you doing tomorrow at 5 o'clock? Mine is a Saturday night. What's the next morning? Church. He says, can you play at 5 o'clock for her? I'm like, yo, you talking about Denise Williams? I said, all right, I'll do it. In a matter of like 15 minutes, my, my, my Dropbox was full. They sent me audio tracks, they sent me recordings of other shows and charts. And I'm talking about not just like the basic charts with your, with your chord progression, I'm talking about charts where it says music written and arranged by Jordan Benson. Right, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> and, and the thing is, like I said, keeping your bond. If I said I'm gonna do it, I got to do it. So I'm up at 3 o'clock in the morning on a, on a Sunday morning trying to get this music right because I said I was going to do the gig. But it's not, it wasn't just about me. It's about VA. I'm rapping all of y'all. Because I'm like, if I go up there and I don't know this music, that's going to make everybody look bad. And that's the stuff y'all got to think about. 
But y'all trying to take, yeah, it looks good. You want to have it on your resume. I played for, I played for Todd. I played for da 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 when they came in town. That looks good, yeah. But if you don't, you're not holding it down learning your music, don't none of that stuff matter. Now, I'm gonna talk about this really quickly since we talk about concerts and stuff. There's a difference between stuff you hear being played at a concert that's concert stuff and Sunday morning stuff, okay? Prime example, if I'm at a concert and somebody sings uh, I Surrender All, right? So, uh, go to the chorus. Um, right, so they get to I Surrender All, right? Normally, you would play it like this. Right? If you're at a concert, you might hear somebody do something crazy like this. Right? Mm -hmm. But that's concert stuff. You're not going to do that on Sunday morning. Because if you do that on Sunday morning, that's taking the, the, the focus off of the presence and the spirit that's supposed to be in the room. And it's putting it on you. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's a difference between concert stuff. Now, we can talk about that real quick. What I did right there was, um, I did, I used major chords and I used the common tone between what was going on in the melody and what I was playing, okay? So we're in the key of B flat, and what I did, I took major seventh chords, okay? So the melody is doing this. Okay? So I took, the first note is B flat, so I used a B major seventh chord. Use that common tone. And all I did is walked it down. The next note, the next note in the melody is an A natural. So I used a seven from a B flat major chord. Did that. Do it, go down a half step to A flat. Half step down, I mean a whole step down, sorry, to G flat. And then the E. Alright? Now, another thing too, with doing stuff like that, you gotta make sure that the singer you're playing for can handle you doing that. <laughs> That's key. <laughs> That's key. Because a lot of, and I'm, and I'm not throwing any shade on singers, because singers will, will, will come at you so hard. I'm not, throwing, <laughs> I'm not throwing any shade on singers, but some singers, they don't listen as well as others do. Okay, so you play one little thing off and it throws off everything for them. So you have to make sure that your singer can handle you playing that behind them. Because if they can't handle that, it's, it's no point, right? So, um, now, and again, too, even with song choices, because, I mean, like I said, that happens all the time. A praise or worship leader, they'll hear a dope song on somebody's album, like, we're going to do this Sunday morning. It's not a Sunday morning song. <laughs> like, every song you hear on somebody's album, and you have to understand the way the industry is set up, a lot of these songs that they're writing on these albums, they're meant to sell records. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not also always meant to be sung at church on a Sunday morning. It'd be nice if you sing every Sunday, right? But a lot of them, they're meant to sell records, so you got to remember that stuff. Okay? <clears throat> Next thing, um, as musicians, okay, if you can't play in every key, if you if you do like this and somebody's going up to C sharp and you and you gotta, okay, you don't need to be going to nobody's church asking for five hundred dollars a Sunday. True. I'm just keeping them on it, okay, because you gotta okay look at it like this, right? If you if you had a problem with your car and you had a problem with the transmission, and the person fixing your car, it's like, yeah, I can fix cars. Give me $500, I can fix it. When you come to find out, all they can do is change tires. <laughs> I got a transmission problem. All you can do is fix tires. How you gonna help me, okay? So that's like you saying, you, I, can, I can play, you don't know any hymns, and if you have a keyboard without transpose. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not coming for nobody that transpose, because we've all been there. I, trust me, when I found out a keyboard transpose, it was one of the best days of my life. It was amazing. I was like, what? I can play this key and this do it every what? But, <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's ups and downs to all of that stuff, okay? So you got to make sure that when you're at a certain point musically, what you're asking for, you can actually back that up with, with your ability. You know what I'm saying? There's certain cats that I know personally what you know they could go they can go anywhere and ask for whatever because they put that time in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They 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 work for that. Alright? Um now let's go back to something real quick. We were talking about the um like the melody and stuff what we did with I Surrender All. 
it's uh we can we can do something with that with the uh diminish diminish uh seventh chord i had a professor in college he said the diminished seventh chord is one of the most powerful chords in all of music because it can lead to so many different places all right let's take this chord right here we're going to do a b flat diminished um seventh chord okay so we're going to use um a b flat so okay so we got b flat we got d flat e and a i'll talk about enharmonics shortly Okay, but for right now we're gonna say B flat, D flat, E and A. So we're gonna go backwards with this. So it's gonna be B flat, G, E and A. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play uh, minor nine chords in my left hand. Okay. I'm gonna play minor nine chords in my left hand, and then I'm going to play the, the seven, nine, and eleven in my right hand. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is using the notes in that diminished chord, that's gonna be my bass, my bass notes, so. Okay, so, uh, come on, right. So play this B flat for me, hold that. So, I go to G, go to E, D flat. Okay, so what I did was I followed those, the diminished chord, I mean the, uh, that diminished chord with the chords I was playing, right? So, you can do that, uh, let me see. That's what minor chords, okay? Now, we just had Christmas season. If anybody uh, is like me, y'all wanna listen to Charlie Brown, Christmas music, okay. Vince Guaraldi, he does a lot of stuff with the diminished chord, with the major stuff. He did a lot of stuff like, uh, let me see. On that skating song, on the, on the soundtrack? Okay, you yeah, not real Charlie Brown fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but if you um, you could do something like that and then take it somewhere. So I'm gonna do the same thing that he would do. I'm gonna go um, use an uh, E flat diminished uh, chord. So I got E flat, G flat, A, C, right? So I'm gonna go all major chords, just one, three, fives. But then when I get to the end of that, I'm gonna come out of that, and then I'm gonna go up a half step and use that as a five. It sounds complicated. I'm explaining it to you. All right? So here we go. So we got E flat major, G flat major, A major, C major. Now I'm at D flat, use that as a five. All right. So again, you might be able to use that. I'm I'm just giving different theoretical stuff you could do, whatever. You don't use it when you else. But so you got. Again, one more time. You got E flat, G flat, A, C. Now you got D flat. That's your five. Okay? Now, we were talking earlier about something called enharmonics. Does anybody know what enharmonics are? All right, good. Here we go. So let's take the key of A flat. We do this in church all the time. I'm going to show you what we do. Okay? Where we in harmonics basically is is um, giving each uh, alphabetical uh, alphabetical note and a key its its position. Okay, so that's saying that every key that you have some form of A B C D E F and G in every key, right? So let's take our scale. So we're going to go at A flat. I'm going to choose A flat because we do this A flat all the time. So you start at A flat, go B flat, go C. What's the next note? D flat. What do we call it? C sharp, right? Yeah. We do that all the time. So we'll say A flat, E flat, C, C sharp, E flat. Now where's where's D? We didn't have any form of D right there, right? So you have A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat. Now the reason why they call it enharmonics is because essentially that one note have two different names depending on the situation. This can be a C sharp in some situations, it can be a D flat in some situations. In harmonics of it, okay? Yeah. Now, you have some people that are like real gung ho with the theory stuff and they just like, you know, way over the top. You know, it's not that deep. But 
if you if you want to get theoretical and technical with it, so if you were say if you were this is C sharp major, then everything has to be sharp. Okay? Now my, my band director at the high school, he would say that C is the all or nothing key. C major is all all naturals, C sharp is everything is sharp, C flat, everything is flat. C is that all or nothing key. Alright? So the reason why I like I try to explain that is because wherever you all go digging for whoever you want to sound like you know what you're talking about. That's good. Because you don't want to get out there and you're playing for whoever and you sound like just like a, a, a little quote unquote church musician. You don't want you don't want that to be the situation. You want to get out there like, oh okay, you know what you're talking about. That's you want that. Okay? Now, bring it to my next point. Being able to read music against not being able to read music. Okay? How many of y'all are here to read music? So, all right. Now, if you can't read music, it's no shade at all. Okay? Because I've seen cats, it's to me, I think it's, it's, it's a, uh, you, you need to be able to have a healthy balance of the two. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? That's true. Because I've seen some cats where you can put anything in front of them, any piece of music in front of them. I'm talking about Bach, Beethoven, jazz, whatever, and now I'm, they can blaze it. Yeah. But you take it out, you take the music in front of them, tell them to play Happy Birthday. Like, they can't do it because right. they need that music in front of them. Right. But then in the same situation, you got cats that play by ear, and they can play anything. But you put music in front of them. You know what I'm saying? That's so. Good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but the thing is, you need to, to be able to have a healthy balance of the two. You see what I'm saying? Because that the, the, the gateway to so many different gigs is available when you can do both. You know what I'm saying? That is true. You're going to have some gigs where they're like, I need you to listen to this and learn it now. Then you got some, I'm going to sing you the music, I need you to be able to read it and play it today. Like I said with that Denise Williams gigs, there were some songs I could have tried to learn right here, but I needed to have the charts. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it helps to be able to have a healthy uh, medium balance of the both of those. You know what I'm saying? That's good, man. So, um, okay, I'm talking too much. I need to play some of those. <laughs> um, play, Matt. Ending of songs, okay? Now, um, I'm going to show y'all this one. Again, I'm showing y'all a lot of stuff that y'all might not be able to actually use in the church service setting, but maybe you can learn it anyway. All right, um, I had a friend who showed this to me. I forgot the, te the technical name he gave for it. But what it really is, is like you're using major chords and you're going in a uh, tritone. Okay, so we we'll use the key of uh, F sharp. So we're ending the song 251. <laughs> sound like something out of a movie, like real cinematic type, okay? All you're doing, like I said, you're using, you're going in tritone, so I'm going F sharp major, and both hands, just triads, then I'm going down to C major. Back to F sharp. Okay, that's all that is, all right? Again, might not be able to use that on a Sunday morning, but it's good to have. <laughs> and if, if I hear y'all playing something, like, oh, no, 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 no. all right. Now, um, now this one right here, this is about uh, playing chords around a melody. Okay, when I was playing uh, in college, I played with a little group called Under Construction, and we would do these jazz gigs. Of course, we do footprints. Everybody heard footprints. Okay, so we would get to the end of the song and we would uh, just, just, just stay on the, on the one. So, so we would have a melody that would go over there. Okay, so there are different things you could do on that melody. You could do what we were doing earlier, we talked about our sus chords, okay? Uh, so you go. Okay, you could do that over that, okay? Or you could do what we normally hear in church, do like your half diminished chords with that tension and that dissonance. So. Okay? And you're still, you're still incorporating that common tone of the melody in there. Mm -hmm. Now what I would do a lot of times, again, my mind is a little different. Um, I would do 
those minor nine chords over the melody and take it to a whole other place. Do me, do me a favor. So you got C, I'm sorry, D, B flat, C, G. Thank you, man. D, B flat, C, G. Okay, so do the, do the uh, D, B flat, C, G. Okay, one more time. B flat, C, G. Okay, so three different things you can do with that. First one we did, like I said, the sus chords. So you got right. Then you have diminished chords. Okay, now you hear that in church. I don't know why people like that tension, that dance. Angry people playing. Like, it's like, um, so, and it's amazing that didn't sound like a demonic chord, but the other one did. But anyway, um, so okay. Or you can do like I said, the nine chords over it. Uh, one more time. Do that. Do that. Okay. Or do one more time. Or you can do major chords. I'll do it. Do it. about different types of substitution. Yeah. You just gotta try different stuff, okay? Now again, try that when you're rehearsing, not actually on Sunday, okay? Mm -hmm. um, also, um, this is a, um, this is one thing, this is just a point I'm making. Musicians that we struggle with, um, it's a word called humility. Okay? I had to learn this a lot. There's nothing wrong with saying that you can't do something. Okay? I know we have this pride that we don't want to say, I can't play this, I can't do that. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Because most of the time, you'll get much more respect for saying that you can't do something than to say you can do it and go out there and flop and be horrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. You know that's what I mean? True. So, be humble sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Say, I can't do it, now nah, I don't know it. Like certain hymns they call it out, you don't know it. Cause matter of fact, I'm gonna really, I'm really stick to y'all. It was just Christmas time. This Christmas music, that joint would get you every time. Cause there's some chord changes in that Christmas music, it'll catch you way. Y'all, y'all think y'all know the song real? Like get to the middle of it and you all messed up. So there's nothing wrong with saying you don't know a song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People respect you for that. Because like, uh, let's say, let's say. You know what I mean? But that's why it is 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 important. Just be like, you know what? Nah, I don't know this one. It's nothing wrong with saying it. Take that L. It's okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I promise you, because you don't want to be that one that they just singing and, just, and then uh, 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 you come back in like that. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Um, I was gonna try to have somebody here. To sing a song and play behind us so I can show y'all some different stuff. Donald yeah. here. Donald can sing. Come on, Donald. <laughs> sing Donald. Um, <laughs> no, because BJ can sing. <laughs> I think. Oh, this is another thing. Um, keyboard player, okay? Uh, we have a pocket too. Okay? We have a pocket too. A lot of times we want to stress the pocket on the drummers. We have a pocket too. Because a lot of times keyboard players and then get up there and start doing a whole bunch of everything. Sometimes, you know, we just got to lay in the pocket. I was uh, I was in a, a situation one time I was talking to Daddy is Tribute, and he was talking about how James Brown would uh, audition his musicians for his band back in the day. He said the way he would audition them is to see if they could fit in the groove and just sit there in the groove. Not shedding and showing all you could do, just sitting in the groove. 
just finding that pocket and just establishing that groove. So keyboard players, we have a groove too. I mean, we have a pocket too, okay? Um, Donald, give, what, give me a song, uh, some, just a groove or something. Church song? Huh? Church song. Sure. Okay, sure. Um. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, in that pocket. So while they're singing that, that's not the time. You. That's not that's not your time. Okay, stay in that pocket. Stay right there in that pocket. Um. I forgot, I'm about to say something. I forgot. Um, but, yeah, um, be professional. Stay in your pocket. Learn your music. Um, I, I forgot, it was, it was another point. I can't remember. But, um, yeah, all of that stuff. I cannot remember what I was going to say. It's going to come when I'm about to go to sleep tonight. But, um. <laughs> But um, yeah, I can't remember. It. But uh, I just definitely want to say thank you to AJ. Matt, uh, you gotta close us out with something, Matt. This ain't when time would have talked. We gonna make it this. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh man. Um. But yeah, thank you for having me on. I uh, appreciate you, man. And thank y'all for being here, man. For listening to me ramble on for a couple of minutes. Let me uh. Yes. Obedience, better than sacrifice. <laughs> Obedience. <laughs> Both gonna bless you. Walk in it. Wanna play Charles Witch? No, I can't. Fritz of King. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Same thing with what we did before with the nine chords. Uh, we're now in A flat. So, uh, right? It's the same thing with the nine chords. Now, this is when you, as you as a keyboard player, uh, you can kind of come out of your pocket a little bit because nobody's singing right here. Again, placement. If people are singing right there, it's not the time for you to do the chords that you learned on YouTube last night. Okay? <laughs> But at that, right, at that point of the song, no, nobody's singing right there, okay? So you have, uh, remember we said the half diminished chords? Uh, okay, you can do that. You can do the, uh, the sus chords. Sus chords sound real pretty though. Okay, or you can do the nine chords over there. Okay, you do that over, the, um, over that B flat. Um, I'm trying to play a whole song, Mickey. Uh, uh, uh all right. Um, <laughs> um, okay. Um, uh, okay. I'm gonna play this a little country. I don't know to play this song, man. Um, okay. I'm going to just get up. I can't think of a song to play. Thank you. Thank you all. I appreciate you guys. Right. What's up, Brandon?